Yo, what is going on guys? It's Juan Soli here with A-Squad Gaming and welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for some more Ghost Recon. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. This is actually going to be episode one of a new series called Ghost Profile. So what this series is actually going to be about is diving deep into the lore, the history of the Ghost Recon franchise with the characters, specific games, missions, and all sorts of stuff like that. Because I just kind of feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of playing the Ghost Recon franchise now. A lot of people that maybe Ghost Recon Wildlands was your first Ghost Recon game don't know a lot of the history and the lore surrounding the Ghost Recon franchise. And there's so much to talk about with all of this with characters, missions, certain games, DLC uh, expansions and stuff for games and stuff like that. And this is something that I really think you guys would enjoy kind of diving deep into the history of the characters and stuff of the Ghost Recon franchise. So how this all came about, it was almost a month ago or so, I actually put a poll up on my YouTube channel and I asked who would you guys like to see return in a future special operations update for Ghost Recon Wildlands since there are still two remaining. And I put two of the most infamous, you know, well-known characters in the Ghost Recon franchise. That would be Captain Scott Mitchell and Captain Joe Ramirez. And then I also put a third option for those of you that may not know who the those people were and I was kind of shocked like I wasn't mad or anything but I was shocked with you know the following that I have on my YouTube channel when it comes to Ghost Recon and stuff like that that we had almost 1300 votes and 70% of you had no idea who those people were and sp specifically Captain Scott Mitchell he is probably one of the most notable characters in the history of the Ghost Recon franchise he was in multiple games multiple novels he actually had some spin-offs he was also a part of the what was it the uh, Tom Clancy's Hawks game which was kind of like the fighter jet game and uh, he had a lot of presence in the Ghost Recon franchise for years and years and years and I was kind of obviously it did get more votes than Joe Ramirez but a lot of people didn't know who these people were so that's kind of where this entire series is kind of based off of we're going to be kind of diving into mostly the characters of the Ghost Recon franchise all the way from obviously Captain Scott Mitchell which is actually what we're going to be talking about in today's episode Joe Ramirez will probably be in a future episode some of the characters from the Wildlands Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter Advanced Warfighter 2 Ghost Recon Future Soul Soldier, the whole nine yards talking about some of the cool things with the games itself and uh, all sorts of cool information and lore backstories and whatnot. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're actually going to be talking about is a little bit of a backstory leading up to Scott Mitchell actually going into the military as well as becoming the captain of the Ghost Squad. So he was actually born on August 13th of 1976 and he was the oldest of four children and he was a very independent person all the way up through high school. And actually after graduating from high school, he found that he could not actually afford to go to college. So he chose to enlist in the service instead and initially he planned on just doing that to use the GI Bill benefits, but he found that the Army lifestyle suited him and he became a professional soldier and at that point I would almost say the rest is history but there is so much lore so much information to talk about with Captain Scott Mitchell after that point leading all the way up through all of the Ghost Recon games so we might as well keep going so Captain Scott Mitchell actually completed his basic training at Fort Drum shortly after that completed his airborne and ranger training at Fort Benning and then right after that also completed his special forces selection course and later the qualifications course at Fort Bragg and at that point he was a first lieutenant and he returned to the United States States in 2005 and was recruited by the Ghost and in June 2007 he was promoted to captain of the Ghost lead. So that leads us all the way up to the start of Ghost Recon 2. So if there wasn't he wasn't actually in Ghost Recon 1. Ghost Recon 1 was more of a bunch of generic class characters and stuff that you got to play as. There wasn't really, you know, your your Captain Scott Mitchell, your Joe Ramirez, that kind of stuff in the original Ghost Recon. That kind of picked up in Ghost Recon 2 and kind of obviously went all the way through Wildlands as we know today. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into Ghost Recon 2. So, on July 4th of 2007, a North Korean Super Silkworm missile hit and sank the USS Clarence e. Walsh. This is like the opening cutscene of Ghost Recon 2. And in response, the president sends in the ghost to push North Korea back and leading that ghost squad is no one other than Captain Scott Mitchell. And he leads the ghost on a mission assigned to them and siding with the South Koreans in order to push back North Korea and uh, from escalating the war even further. And also with this, this was our first tie into the Splinter Cell franchise. Um, actually, in Splinter Cell Chaos 3, there was a nod to this, this instance here that said that the Silkworm missile that actually sank the USS Clarence e. Walsh was fired by a private military corporation and that like I said that was in the Splinter Cell Chaos Theory campaign and that like I said ties right in with the Ghost Recon 2 campaign it was kind of our first crossover in the Tom Clancy universe between these two games obviously we know about the one in Ghost Recon Wildlands where Sam Fisher comes back and you get to play alongside him and stuff so 
So after those events, in actually 2011, the North Korean military mobilized against the government, and with the brutal and charismatic General Jung Kong Sun heading the coup, and the total control over the military, Jun actually gains access to the country's nuclear arsenal and makes preparations to start a war among the surrounding Asian powers, and this prompts NATO and the United States to send a large peacekeeping force in order to shut down Jung's operations before he destabilizes the Korean Peninsula, and at the tip of the U.S. spear, Captain Scott Mitchell and the ghosts are once again sent into North Korea to avert disaster. So this kind of brings us to the end of Ghost Recon 2 and leads us into the Summit Strike DLC where Mitchell led the team into Kazakhstan in 2012 when Assad Raheel staged his coup and Mitchell lead a team into battle against his forces and eventually stopped the rogue leader. So that was actually a DLC I believe on PC it was a separate purchase and then on PS2 and stuff it was just an additional thing you were able to unlock I believe. So that brings us all the way up to the start of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. So, six years after the Korean conflict, which was basically what Ghost Recon 2 was, um, a spy plane carrying the Guardrail IX, it's basically a device capable of disrupting wireless communications, and it's shot down over Nicaragua. Intelligence discovers a plot to transfer the device to rebels in Mexico City, and the ghosts, led by Scott Mitchell, are sent in to retrieve it. The mission is aborted when the coup begins in Mexico City, and the ghosts are ordered to Mexico City immediately, where a summit involving the leaders of the United States, President James Ballantyne, Canada's Prime Minister, as well as Mexico's President uh, Ruaz Peña, who are signing the North American Joint Security Agreement, and things go horribly wrong when the rebels attack the summit, killing the Canadian Prime Minister and causing the other two presidents to go into hiding, and Scott Mitchell is tasked with safely extracting both leaders, and this takes place in Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. So, after all of these events, Scott is ordered to retrieve the guardrail IX and the nuclear football, but he only succeeds in disabling the guardrail after lending some support to the U.S. forces. He is then ordered to destroy the last pieces of the guardrail before sneaking into the palace, and General Entrevos is there and he was captured while attempting to flee, but Carlos manages to escape and hijacks a friendly Black Hawk, shooting the pilot in the head and greatly angers Mitchell, who then sees this happen on his crosscom like heads-up display, and then Mitchell and the ghost then pursue Carlos where they have a final confrontation with him ending with Scott shooting him off a rooftop causing him to fall to his death. So that brings us to the end of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighters like story and the realm of the lore and everything like that. So directly after the events of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter that leads us into Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. So after the events of the Rebel Uprising, Rebel activity has caused civil unrest throughout Mexico and despite Antreveros being killed an insurgency has continued under the leadership of Juan de la Barrera He's the new head honcho down there. And the ghosts are sent back to Mexico by General Joshua Keating to investigate claims that the rebels are in possession of a dirty bomb, as well as prevent the rebellion from directly assaulting the United States soil. And after clearing the way for additional American forces and destroying two enemy weapon convoys, Captain Scott Mitchell learns that Barrera has obtained several nuclear warheads and now has the ability to destroy any major city in the United States. With the WMD threat confirmed, the ghosts are sent into Juarez to search for the nukes, and along the way they link up with the Loyalist Mexican Army, and together they neutralize most of the rebel activity in the city, but one of the nuclear warheads is set off inside of the marketplace, causing large amounts of radiations to pollute the city, leaving Scott Mitchell no other choice but to evacuate. So... With all of those events taking place shortly after that, during a mission to extract a Mexican journalist, Black Hawk 5 is shot down by an enemy RPG, and Mitchell manages to survive and escape, but his field runner, Lieutenant Josh Rosen, is actually captured, along with the Black Hawk 5 itself. So to avoid the rebels showing the wreckage on TV as media manipulation, Captain Scott Mitchell is sent in to destroy the wreckage of the Black Hawk and rescue Rosen. Both missions are successful, but after this, the ghosts are sent on a mission to obtain the two nuclear warheads. Bravo team actually manages to secure one of them, but Barrera escapes via helicopter and Scott Mitchell gets on the gunner seat of Black Hawk 9 and pursues Barrera through the air and manages to shoot down the helicopter, killing him, although the last nuke is not found. After all of that taking place, they head to a few false locations of one of the nukes and the ghosts head back to Juarez where they find the last nuke. The nuke is moments from being launched and Mitchell and his team are on the balcony overlooking the launch site. With an entire nation counting on him, Scott orders the American fighter pilot to launch an 
EMP, which Mitchell was directly in the blast radius of. The EMP was launched, stopping the nuke from launching as well as sending Scott on his back where he manages to hear a few last messages over his failing crosscom. Obviously, the EMP totally shredded that. But you get to hear a few things from President Ballantyne, General Keating, and Rosen moments before he blacks out. So that brings us to the end of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. All of the information surrounding that game. And in the timeline... Obviously, the timeline kind of shifts around here because the next thing we're going to talk about is actually Ghost Recon Wildlands and the tie-in that actually Scott Mitchell has with that game. Even though that is the most recent Ghost Recon, that is how the timeline lines up. I know there was some speculation on one of the things that was said in Ghost Recon Wildlands dialogue with the mentioning of Kozak in some actual in-game dialogue in Ghost Recon Wildlands. I'm not sure why that is because Ghost Recon Wildlands, according to the timeline, takes place before Ghost Recon Future Soldier. That does does not mean that Ghost Recon Future Soldiers characters weren't already ghosts and stuff like that, but I was a little curious because if you actually dig into the details of the, the actual Ghost Recon timeline, Future Soldier takes place, like I believe, in like 2024, and Ghost Recon Wildlands is actually set to take place in July, June or July of 2019, so not sure how that all comes about, but the next thing we are going to briefly be talking about is how Scott Mitchell has a slight tie-in to Ghost Recon Wildlands. So, at that point, he is a lieutenant colonel, nicknamed by his soldiers as the Old Man, and he actually managed to revamp the group for specialized tactics, which he debriefed Nomad after a failed mission in Donatsky, and later, against his better judgment, promoted him to Ghost Lead for a rescue mission in Venezuela as the ghosts were overworked. After that, the team returned successfully. He allowed Nomad to remain as the Ghost Lead and was then briefed by CAA agent Karen Bowman, and ties between the Santa Blanca drug cartel and the Amazonian Free State. So, basically, Scott Mitchell was above Nomad. He kind of was direct correlation to Nomad when Nomad was actually promoted to Ghost Lead before the events of Ghost Recon Wildlands. So, that's the tie-in with Scott Mitchell with Ghost Recon Wildlands. Even though I believe he's never mentioned in the game, he does have a tie-in with the characters of um, the ghost team that is in Ghost Recon Wildlands. So next in the timeline is our slight tie-in with Tom Clancy's Hawks. So in 2021, Scott Mitchell works directly with the Hawk Squadron in several missions against the Lost Trinidad and the Artemis Global Security. He didn't have a whole lot to deal with that game, but he was in that game. You do a couple missions where he's actually in dialogue and stuff like that. I don't believe... He's physically in the game, but you do talk to him over like the intercom and stuff like that in the game and everything with that. So with all of that information that we've known so far, guys, that's going to lead us up to our next thing, which is actually Tom Clancy's End War and how Captain Scott Mitchell has a tie in with that as well. So sometime before the year 2020, Scott Mitchell is actually promoted to Lieutenant General and given command of the Joint Strike Force. During the events of World War III, he leads the Joint Strike Force against the European and Russian threats and defends his country any way that he can. He is the general who briefs the player before battles and also updates the player on how the war is progressing for the United States of America. After the turn of 40, World War III has not been resolved. Mitchell may be encountered commanding the 15th Special Operations Battalion. And then also he was at the forefront before World War III began. His forces defended the Freedom 4 lifter and launched a strike against the Europeans in Copenhagen. And he also devises the devastating opening moves that the Joint Strike Force conducts at the outbreaks of hostilities. So that is a little bit of a tie-in with Tom Clancy's End War. For those of you guys that never played that game, it was a pretty good game. But that leads us up to the final piece of information that ties in with Captain Scott Mitchell, and that is Ghost Recon Future Soldier. So with Ghost Recon Future Soldier, Scott Mitchell ordered Team Predator, led by Joe Ramirez, to disrupt a weapon shipment in Nicaragua in early 2024. This is basically the first mission of Ghost Recon Future Soldier, but a nuclear warhead explodes, killing the entire team, and Mitchell calls for a pickup, while Mitchell then tasks Hunter Team, led by Cedric Ferguson, with tuggling at the strings to find out who was responsible for killing Team Predator. Then Hunter Team also later becomes involved with the coup investigated by Raven's Rock. Under Mitchell's orders, they assisted the Russian loyalists and rescued President Volodin. And as the crisis ended, Mitchell told them to finish the mission, which Hunter Team then chased down Raven's Rock leadership in Russia. But as they closed in on the last person, Mitchell told them that orders had come straight from the highest levels of the United States government not to touch the leader of the Raven's Rock coup. Ferguson took the orders literally and left him on the train track as a train approached, which killed the leader of the Raven's Rock coup and that brings us to the end of Ghost Recon Future Soldier and pretty much that is all of the information surrounding 
Captain Scott Mitchell, and then later on, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mitchell. Same person, he just kind of goes up the ranks throughout the throughout Ghost Recon's lifespan, I guess you could say. But those that's pretty much all the information that ties Captain Scott Mitchell in with Ghost Recon and all of the games and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys, like, you learned something because he is probably one of the most iconic characters, if not the most iconic character in the Ghost Recon franchise. But overall, guys, that's going to do it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, you guys learned something, you guys want to see some more episodes of ghost profile on the channel make sure to drop a like and comment your thoughts down below also if you guys are new to the channel make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things with ghost recon wildlands state of decay 2 scum and more on the channel moving forward but that's pretty much going to do it for me guys thank you all so much for watching and i will catch you guys later peace out